Hey guys, and welcome to my efficient and realistic 1 to 99 smithing guide for RuneScape 3 in the year 2016. For this guide, I will not be including the clan avatar, refer a friend bonus, or the outfit bonus until level 68, due to the low probability that you have access to said bonuses that early in the game. Let's cover some of the important items that aid higher experience rates. Clan avatars will give a 6% bonus to your base experience if you are holding one, and 3% if someone on your world is. Skilling outfits give 1% bonus per item with a total of 6% more experience with the full set. Refer a friend gives a 10% bonus to any experience gained. Portable forges give a 10% base experience boost and a 10% chance to save a bar when forging. Rock Armor 2 will give an approximate 10% chance to smith an item faster. This means that an item made has a 10% chance of forging it at twice the speed. This effect goes up to adamant bars, but if you would like to smith rune bars and have this chance, you will need to acquire the fourth tier of this plate body. The scroll of efficiency is a scroll from the dungeoneering skill which requires a smithing and dungeoneering level of 55. It has a percentage chance to save a bar while smithing with three or more bars. The percentage is based on the type of bar. For an iron bar, it is 25%. For mithril, it is 10%, etc. The crystal hammer is a hammer that saves 5% on top of the scroll of efficiency. It has a flat 5% chance of saving one bar no matter the type of bar. Combining all of these items is not necessary, but it will help in lowering the cost and time for 99 smithing. Let's move on to the mechanics. To understand this guide a little better, you're going to need to know the system that Jagex uses for time. Each action in RuneScape is based on its own time scale, and it's a little different than the standard seconds. To make coding easier on themselves, game developers rescale their system cost to the unit of ticks. For RuneScape, the unit of a tick is equivalent to six tenths of a second. Many of you may have heard this from playing the game, but never really understood it, or even really cared to. Although it is not necessary to understand game ticks, I will be using them in this guide to better understand experience rates. The reason behind RuneScape's weird number crunch is the idea that in one minute, 60 seconds have passed. If RuneScape used the conventional time scale, a weekly reset code would be 604,800 units. Using the tick-based system, the number for a weekly reset code may be 1,008,000 ticks. Now, for the normal player, the difference between 604,800 units and 1,008,000 units doesn't really call for an alarm. But when you have thousands of code strands for thousands of commands and interconnections, less tedious numbers will really help get you through the workday. I appreciate what they have done by making it easier on themselves. The real tedious work comes in when coding things that are by the minute rather than the day. Think of this clock on the left. It is an ordinary clock with a second hand that goes around the circle, achieving its maximum of 60 different segments before reaching the next minute. Check out this clock on the right that RuneScape uses. It's got 100 segments before it reaches the next minute. Separating minutes into 100 segments allows the brain to make calculations much easier than if it were separated into 60 segments. Each one of these segments on the left is one second, and each one of the segments on the right is one game tick. Every action in the game is based on this tick system. Now that we sort of understand what a game tick is, we can move forward with the guide. This guide is for the smithing skill and will portray theoretical maximums. A theoretical maximum is the highest possible amount that can be achieved during any circumstance. It is a maximum that has been calculated by its core mechanics rather than actually throwing myself out there for a couple of hours to get a more realistic experience rate. Before you go criticizing me for giving wrong information, think of it like this. It's more of a goal to strive to to get as close to as possible so that you can get a maximum efficiency. Although this theoretical maximum is actually achievable, only the very focused players will end up achieving it. This guide is not to bring anyone down. It's to build you up to be the best that you can be, even if it's in a game. Because good work ethic can do wonders for your life in the real world too. Laugh at it or not. The calculations in this video may cause some people some headaches, so I apologize in advance uh, if what I talk about is not explained in the best way possible. I try my best to explain things in a manner that grabs everyone's attention, but also leaves them with a sense of motivation and more knowledge than before listening. With all that being said, let's get into the guide. For levels 1 to 29, you want to complete the Knight Sword quest. This quest does not take very long, and it is definitely worth the time invested because you go straight from 1 to 29 smithing. Levels 29 through 33. The highest experience yielding item that can be forged at level 29 and is still not too unreasonable of a loss is the iron two-handed sword. It gives 75 base experience and uses three bars per item. You will need 78 bars. It yields 130 experience per hour and costs around 11 GP per experience. And you'll be doing this method for approximately three minutes. 
This will cost you just over 65,000 GP. Levels 33 through 48. The highest experience yielding item that can be forged at level 33, and is not too much loss, is the Iron Plate Body. It gives 125 base experience and uses 5 bars per item. You will need 475 iron bars. It yields 209,000 experience an hour and costs around 6.5 GP per experience, and you'll be doing this method for approximately 20 minutes. This will cost you just over 400,000 GP. Levels 48 through 68. The highest experience yielding item that can be forged at level 48 and has a fairly low loss compared to other items is the steel plate body. It gives 187.5 base experience and uses 5 bars per item. You will need 2,535 steel bars. It yields 314,000 experience an hour and costs around 14 GP per experience. And you'll be doing this method for approximately 2 hours. This will cost you just over 7 million GP. Levels 33 through 68. If you're not comfortable spending 14 GP per experience, you can continue to smith iron plate bodies until 68. You will need approximately 4,270 iron bars. This will take you around 3 hours and cost you just under 4 million GP. Level 68 through 88. The highest experience yielding item that can be forged at level 68 is the Mithril Plate Body. It gives 250 base experience and uses 5 bars per item. You will need 11,460 Mithril Bars. It yields 500,000 experience an hour and costs around 11 GP per experience. And you will be doing this method for approximately 8 and a quarter hours. This will cost around 41 million GP. Levels 88 through 99. The highest experience yielding item that can be forged at level 88 is the Adamant Plate Body. It gives 312.5 base experience and uses 5 bars per item. You will need 20,970 Adamant Bars. It yields 625 experience per hour and costs around 6.85 GP per experience. And you will be doing this method for approximately 15 hours. This will cost around 59 million GP. Levels 1 through 99. In total, you'll spend 108 million GP on 1 to 99 smithing and will take approximately 26 hours, including the time to finish the Knight Swords quest. If you use items like the Crystal Hammer, Scroll of Efficiency, and the Portable Forge, your cost will go down significantly. 1 to 99 smithing using those methods will cost around 66 million GP. If you would like to see how I came up with these numbers, I will be explaining it in a spreadsheet within the next couple of minutes. If you are satisfied with the rates I have shown you here, you may click out of the video. I do urge you to continue watching as it is fascinating and knowledge can help you understand some deeper things than how much will this cost me. So to everyone who stayed after the flashy show of all the different XP rates and stuff like that and you want to know the nitty gritty of how I got these numbers, then thank you so much for staying. Um, here this kind of looks a little daunting, but um, I'll go through it as best I can to explain how I got all these numbers and uh, stuff like that. So here on our first column, column B, we have the item that we were talking about in the earlier uh, segment of this video. So we have the iron two-handed sword, iron plate body, steel plate body, mithril plate body, adamant plate body, uh, and then the total. You can do a couple different other methods. This is from my bonus experience weekend prep videos, um, and those are not going to be covered in this video if you do want to see uh, 99 to 120 or 1 to 120 um, then let me know in the comment section below uh, that will include the rune legs in there if you do want to do that I mean it's still slower than the adamant plate bodies but uh, it is cheaper so our next column we have uh, C, which is the level. So for the iron two-handed sword, it's level 29, 33, respectively, 48, 68, and 88, uh, respectively. Then we have the cost per item, and then we have the different bonuses. Uh, the total bonus experience multiplier, which for most of this is going to be 1.1, and then 1.32, which um, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, and then in column J, we have the experience per action, which is basically if you smith an iron two-handed sword, you will get 75 experience, uh, base experience, and that is not going to change. Now, for the actions per hour, um, when I was speaking of the actions, all actions in the game are based off of the tick system. That's why I want to explain what's going on with the tick system. We can skip over this one for now, um, but down here is where I calculated how many actions per hour that's going to be. Um, so we have the experience per hour, which is basically um, the experience per action multiplied by the actions per hour and then multiplied by the total experience multiplier. 
So that's going to be the base experience times the actions per hour times the base multiplier. And that gives you the amount that you can theoretically maximize uh, is 130,020 experience. Now, obviously, that can vary a little bit, but this is supposed to be an upper maximum that you can't really um, beat. Um, so yeah, GP per XP is just going to be your cost per item divided by your experience per action and then divided by the total XP multiplier. And the way that Excel calculates this is as if the total XP multiplier would be multiplied by the uh, experience per action. That's why it looks like this. But if you were to do this in another system, it would um, come out differently. It would all, it would kind of look like a um, a 1.1 times um, the whole value, even though it shouldn't be like that. Um, but to get to understand what's going on here, we have the cost divided by the experience. So that gives us the GP per XP. And then the multiplier is a unitless number. But to show you how I get the cost of the item, I have the amount of bars multiplied the bar, by the bar cost, all in parentheses um, to get the initial cost that it would cost you and then subtract the product cost or the, the item that you would sell at that price. And that gives you the cost per item. Now for this next one, time for next milestone, this is in hours. This is uh, about three minutes, I think three minutes and uh, t 10 seconds, maybe 12 seconds. Um, and the way this is calculated is I have levels one through 99 here and the experience that you need in each of them to get that level. And what I did was I just took level 33, subtracted it by the experience you need at 29 and then put that all in parentheses and then just divide it by the experience per hour. So you have a very, very small number because your experience per hour at level 29 is pretty dang good for smithing. I'm not going to lie. Um, smithing doesn't take very long for 99 at all uh, as long as you have the materials or the money for it. So we do the same thing for that uh, for each of one of these, but but the uh, it's just the different levels in between. So... Uh, this one would be 48, level 48 divide, uh, minus or subtracted uh, 30, level 33's XP. So that's the idea for that, and then just divide by the experience per hour, and that's how I got all these times here, and then this is just the total. So level 88 to 99 would only take you 14 hours if you're at max efficiency, which honestly is not that hard to do. Um, you just got to focus and make sure you're doing everything correctly. So... Now for the actions per hour. Well, here we got the bars used and then the items produced. I figured that might be a cool item, uh, a cool number for you guys to know. Like, oh, how many of these I'm gonna need? Uh, I'll buy twenty-one thousand adamant plate, uh, adamant bars, and that I'll make almost forty-two hundred of them out of it. And that's uh, pretty much just numbers, kind of like a quality of life uh, improvement for you guys. So you don't have to go figure out how many of these do I need. So for 88 to 99, you would buy 21,000 adamant bars, and then you would be able to get 99 for that. So for the actions per hour, <clears throat> well, actually, let me just discuss this part here for a second. The cost for the next milestone, this is another section, um, but this is if you're using the crystal hammer and the scroll of efficiency and the portable. It's going to cost you much, 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 much less. And the way I calculate this is I just took this number and divided it by the GP per XP, which will give me the total cost needed for those levels in between there. And then I just uh, multiply that number by the actual GP per XP for this method. But let me just show you what I did for this one. So I basically took level 33 minus level 29, and I multiplied it by GP per XP. So in this cell here, I'm just dividing by the GP per XP, giving me the amount, of, like I said, the amount of XP that it would be between each of those levels uh, and how much that would 
uh, th that's just the experience between those amount of levels and then just multiply it by this GP per XP because it was easier for me to do that than to just um, to go down here, you know, scroll down and go, oh, where's 33, where's 29? So it was just easier for me to do that. Sometimes you just do things that are easier uh, just for your, you know, your own quality of life uh, improvements. So there I just dragged and uh, dragged it down like that. And that basically, oh, I can't divide by zero because that is a total number. Sorry, that one is not the same calculation as sum of all of these prices. Anyways, um, you guys can look at that and pause the video. But what I do really, I really want to explain is the actions per hour. This one is kind of interesting because um, the way I went about this is because there's 6,000 ticks in an hour. And that's just a number that once you understand what ticks are, it'll just be easy. You can just say, hey, there's 6,000 ticks in an hour because there's 100 in a minute and there's 60 minutes in an hour. So 60 times 100, and there's 6,000. Um, but basically, I went in the game and I figured out how many ticks it took to make one uh, make one item in smithing in the smithing skill. And all these items were all the same. It took four ticks to make one item. Right, so we basically go here. This is the ticks per hour. Then this is the number of play legs you can make an hour, and you just have to have a number to start with. So if you didn't have to bank at all, right, you would be able to make fifteen hundred per hour. Okay, so that being said, there's going to be that many made in an hour. Now what I went and did, and I said, okay, so you have this many per hour. How many? per inventory because the the way we're trying to do this is it's not going to be 1500 in an hour because you have to bank that's if you don't have to bank so what i want to do is see how many times do i actually have to bank you know what i mean so um the amount of inventories per hour is you can make a maximum of nine um plate legs per inventory because it's three three rune uh three bars per um well i guess this is plate legs and i and two-handed swords as well and skirts and stuff um because anything that uses three bars basically and what what i did was i just divided the amount of uh plate legs that i originally you know said i could do divide that and then that would give me the amount of inventories i would or the amount of banks that i would have to do in an hour so i'd have to do 166.667 banks per hour now we can assume that it you know, every single time we bank, it'll take us one second. It may take longer. It may take, uh, I don't know if it could take you less. I think um, the lowest is probably around 1.2 seconds. But for here, I just used one second. Um, so for one second per inventory, you have this many ticks. And the way I did it was I just divided this number by 0.6 ten, uh, uh, six tenths of a second. So 0.6. And that gives me 277.778 ticks in an hour that would be used up by banking right so now you can't really be making um you can't be making anything during those 277 ticks because you're banking with those you know so you're not actually making the items so what you need to do is you have to have a column or a cell saying you know we have our start number um uh, minus the amount for our banking the amount of ticks for our banking and that's where this number comes in so this is the same number as that and basically it goes through that iteration this is what's called an iteration you do a calculation then you go back through it to see and to whittle down what the actual number is so our original number was 1500 and basically you can see we're whittling our our number down to around 1433.62 now um, it just goes through that whole process and then takes this away from uh, 6,000. And it's, a, t it's a, a process that we use in engineering to figure out something when we don't actually know all of the variables for it. It's actually very, very interesting. So as you can see here, we have our last number, which is iteration number five, is very close. Uh, we have we have 14. 33.628 here and we have uh 1433.629 here so they're very close and um i think that's close enough to the third decimal place where we don't really have to think about it anymore it's not going to mess up our calculations too much obviously um even to the 
you know, to the whole number of places. It wouldn't really mess us up that much. But so I was comfortable with having this number and I did the same thing for uh, iteration for plate bodies. So now you're using five items instead. So, you you know, you're using five. You can only make five instead of making nine. So your iteration is going to be a little different. And it came out to 1384.61 uh, for the final number there. But the thing is, that's that's with the, you know, the banking and stuff. So what I did, like if you're using, let's say, uh, the Varrock armor too, you're going to want to add those calculations in too because for every bar or every item you make, um, it will, for every, what is it? For every item you make, you will have a 10% chance of uh, du not duplicating the item, but making another one in the same uh, motion. So it is, I guess it's technically uh, twice as fast for that one thing. So basically, um, I tried to go through an iteration and I realized that I don't need to do that. All I need to do is say, hey, I can make 143.3628 extra plate bodies. Actually, this one's uh, plate legs. I don't know why I typed plate bodies there plate legs made per hour and then basically I sum that up so you now have a number that's actually more than the theoretical maximum that we had before so you're making more because you're quote unquote tick tick manipulating which is something that um is very very uh it's it's totally legal I mean you're using an item from the game uh but I think it's just very cool that you can do more actions per hour than something really would allow you to do normally because you have different items in the game. I think that's great. So basically what I did was I took 1576, stuck it up here for the uh, items that you make with three bars, and then the 15, uh, basically with this sort of stuff, you want to round down. So we got a 1523 uh, for each of these. So that's how I got the actions per hour and that's how I got the experience per hour because you got to base it off of the actions per hour and doing it this way will give you guys a sense of hey I want to go for that I want to go for 625k in uh in an hour with adamant plate bodies I've seen other guides on uh YouTube and people say that adamant plate bodies are 350k an hour mine is almost double what they're saying because they don't go into there and then think about the uh, all of the different aspects of it. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like um, that gives me a sense of, hey, this guy's a little unique. Why are his numbers so high? Let me check out the end of his video. Um, and I hope you will understand where I'm coming from with all of this stuff. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys get 99 uh, smithing and you are happy with the cape i think i think it's a cool cape um but yeah so thank you guys so much for watching and i hope you enjoyed peace thank you so much for watching the video i hope you enjoyed it hope you have a great day follow me on social media and subscribe for more peace